here we look at something called the perfect ionic model. And lattice formation and lattice dissociation enthalpies can be calculated using Born Harbor cycles, as we've looked at in the Born Harbor cycles video, but they can also be calculated using a equation, something called the Born Lander equation, which is a theoretical way of working out these lattice formation and lattice dissociation enthalpies. Now, this equation, this theoretical way of working out these uh, lattice formation and lattice dissociation enthalpies assumes something called the perfect ionic model. And it makes some assumptions. It assumes that bonding is 100% ionic. That is, it's got no covalent character. Now, if you remember your bonding from uh, year 12 or lower 6, then you should be aware that bonding is not as black and white as ionic and covalent. You give lots and lots of, of substances which have got high degree of covalent or ionic character. And it's very, very rare then so bonding then is rarely if it very rarely 100% ionic. The perfect ionic model is assuming ions are what are called perfect spheres. That is, there is no distortion whatsoever. Now, if we have a look at some ions, I'm going to draw a positive ion and a, a negative ion. So this is my positive ion. That's my negative ion. Now, the perfect ionic model would assume these ions are perfect spheres. This is where the bonding is 100% ionic. The electrons are completely transferred from the non-metal, from the positive ion to the negative ion. But in reality, what would happen is the following. This positive ion here, the nucleus of this positive ion, would attract some of the electron cloud from the negative ion. And you'd call, you'd get what we call this distortion. So you'd get a little bit of this distortion of this negative ion. So the nucleus of this positive ion is attracting some of the electron density from the negative ion and is causing distortion of this negative ion. So the ion is now not perfectly spherical. We've got a very small partial sharing of electrons from the negative to the positive ion. So you now have some covalent character. And that occurs in nearly all traditionally ionic compounds. There is some degree of covalent character. In some cases, there is more than others. We're going to have a look now at four ionic compounds. And we're going to look at the experimental and the theoretical lattice, lattice dissociation enthalpies and compare the values. We're going to start by looking at the theoretical lattice dissociation enthalpies of um, silver halides, silver fluoride down to silver iodide. And silver fluoride, theoretical lattice dissociation enthalpy is 953. Silver chloride, 864. Silver bromide is 830. And silver iodide is 808. The first thing to note there is that there is a, a decrease in the lattice dissociation enthalpy as you go down from silver fluoride to silver iodide. Now, if you've watched the Born Harbor cycle video, which I'm assuming you have, then this should be of no surprise. Because as the size of the ion increases, the strength between the bonds, the ionic bonding, will decrease and therefore this value is going to become less positive. So that's the first thing to note. The lattice dissociation enthalpy decreases... from silver fluoride to silver iodide as the size of the negative ion increases. Remember, the bigger the ion, the 
smaller the lattice dissociation length will be, the more the less positive it will be. If this is lattice formation, it will be less negative. Remember, it's all about the size of the number rather than the sign. Now, if we look at what the experimental lattice dissociation enthalpies will be, they will still follow the same trend. They will still decrease as you go down from silver fluoride to silver iodide. But what we're interested in here is the difference between the two values. Silver fluoride is 967, silver chloride 915, silver bromide 904, and silver iodide is 889. So again, no surprise there, we've got a decrease in the values of the lattice dissociation enthalpies for exactly the same reason as we've mentioned here. But what we're, we're looking at is the difference between the two values. Now remember, if the bonding is 100% ionic, the experimental and theoretical values would be the same. The fact that there's a difference between the experimental and theoretical values tells you that there must be some degree of covalent character. The bigger the difference between the two values, the more covalent character there is. And that's important to note. So the bigger the, bigger the difference between the lattice dissociation enthalpy experimental and lattice dissociation enthalpy theoretical, the more covalent character. As we go down from silver fluoride to silver iodide, we can see the difference between the experimental and theoretical values become bigger. So what that tells me is as you go from AGF to AGI, there is a bigger difference between LDE experimental and the LDE theoretical. Which tells me then that the silver iodide therefore has got more covalent character. The most covalent character silver fluoride has got the least covalent character. What else can we infer from this data? Well, the experimental values in each case are larger than the theoretical values, which tells you that the covalent character in the bonding is increasing the bond strength. So we can also make that assumption as well. The covalent character is causing the strength of the bonds to increase. So that's what we can infer from the data from the table. Obviously, in both cases, you get a decrease, and that's because the size of the ion increases, weaker attraction between the silver ions and the, and the halide ions. The bigger the difference between the two values, the bigger the difference between the experimental and the theoretical, the more covalent character you've got. And the data in the table then tells you as you go down the group, if you go down from silver fluoride to silver iodide, the values, the difference between the two values get bigger. So as you go down the group from silver fluoride to silver iodide, the covalent character gets greater. And the result is if the covalent character is increasing the strength of the bonding, because in each case, there's an increase in the experiment, the increase in the lattice dissociation enthalpy from the theoretical to experimental. And that there is the perfect ionic model.